Good evening and welcome to our talk today. The drive towards enabling an inclusive, balanced and equal workforce is a force to be reckoned with. Over the past decade, workspaces have been taking steps to increase the diversity, inclusivity and equity quotient, but in most sectors, the effort as well as the progress seems cosmetic. At all levels with more within society, programs are directed towards the inclusion of people. But is this more about visible diversity? Is it about showing that we care? Or is it about taking strategic steps towards systematic change? The Diverse series, a collaboration between Ladies Who Lead and Dextrous, seeks to answer these questions and provide solutions by talking to experts. Intelligently designed co-working spaces in Mumbai, Dextrous strives to offer a diverse, aware and more inclusive environment, understanding that this has a huge impact on well-being and as well as performance. As we can see, this beautiful space that we are in is their lower, lower parallel office. Ladies Who Lead aims at building an ecosystem that leverages the expertise of women leaders in their sphere of influence and creates a dynamic community that empowers, enables and encourages. Today we discuss what it would take to make these changes at the workplace with Harish Ayer, an equal rights activist and diversity, equity and inclusion head at Access Bank. Harish is the only Indian national listed in the World Pride Power list of the 100 most influential LGBT people in the world. And, one, and was one of the impleaders in the historic Section 377 case. Welcome, Harish. We're so happy to have you here today with us. My pleasure. My pleasure, Anisha. So let's start by first actually unboxing what the concept of inclusivity, diversity, and equity actually means. They're interchangeable concepts, but we can't replace them in today's workspace. I think what's, what's important is, that, uh, is to recognize that they're not interchangeable. Um, the fact that uh, diversity is is basically about hiring, it's about how distinctive everyone is. Inclusion is about creating an enabling environment within the organization. Mm -hmm. And equity is ensuring that you provide access to everybody. Uh, what I mean by that is uh, um, you can't just complain that we don't have persons with disability in our workplaces. Do you have ramps? Okay, mm -hmm. you can't complain that you don't have uh, trans. Oh, you know, we are very inclusive of trans people, uh, but but where, where will, uh, do you have bathrooms? Okay, do you, have you, uh, have you educated everyone in your organization about the fact that there could be trans people who could be joining the workforce? So I think um, diversity, equity and inclusion are three different and distinct, um, distinct things and we shouldn't be putting all of it in, uh, in assuming that uh, one word is the synonym of another. But equality has now become equity because they need to have a stake in making decisions as well. Is there a lag in between actually hiring people from diverse backgrounds and you know ticking the boxes and actually giving them the power to make decision making processes? There is. I mean, we don't live in a more equal world. We don't live in a more equitable world. And uh, um, I firmly believe, Anisha, that to address an issue, you need to undress the issue. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's important to look at it nakedly and, uh, and look at the issue and see that, uh, you know, the women labor force participation is below Saudi Arabia. Um, Which you, is uh, you look at um, so, many, so many other parameters. Uh, you, you, you have the Gallup study, which was done in the US which basically states that uh, around 16% of, um, of any population could be from the LGBTQ community. Uh, there is no study done in India. Okay, so, uh, so the truth is that uh, there is still a lot that needs to be done uh, just by saying that you're inclusive, just by saying that, uh, that, that, you, uh, that you respect um, diverse uh, people coming in. Uh, it, it will not make make the change. If you have to make the change, you have to be intentional, and you have to be you have to take steps towards it. You have to take steps in educating people within your organization. Uh, you need to be intentional and create products for people who belong to diverse uh, diverse groups externally. So it, it has to be a business decision. It has to be an HR decision. It has to be a rounded decision. But then how do you distinguish between an organization that's doing it as a tokenism and one that actually believes and is driving policy changes towards it? Uh, when, when I mean, you, you can tell the difference. As a person who is from the LGBT community, okay. uh, I know for sure that when 
uh, every time it's June, uh, which is not the Indian Pride, Pride Month, month. Yeah. it's the American Pride Month. And uh, it's uh, the Indian Pride Month Do should be September. Do we have an Indian Pride Month? It should be September because, because uh, 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 September is when we got, uh, September 6th is when we got the, uh, you know, uh, got, got Section 377 decriminalized, uh, read down rather. Uh, so, so it should be September, but and I mean the month is of no, not of any significance. But uh, the intention, you have suddenly everyone turning rainbows, and you go inside their offices. Uh, can a trans person just walk into your office without being questioned? Uh, and I know of many places where uh, trans people can't just walk in to an office. You can't walk in uh, with your partner. You will not have policies uh, within your organization. So, so externally to project, uh, yes. it looks all very fancy, but we are not all a thing. All rainbows. We are yeah. not a thing. I mean, you can't just think of women on March 8th and think of LGBT people on, uh, in the month of June and on September 6th and forget them. Uh, I'm gay all 365 days of the year. I'm not just gay in the month of June or on September 6th. <laughs> No, it makes a big in impact as well. But when we're talking about, like you said, there are very few organizations where a transgender person can walk in. So in, when we're talking about that, do we need to make changes and policy changes at an infrastructure level as well as provide psychologically safe spaces for people to feel comfortable coming in? For instance, women who come back post-baby, there are postnatal programs, there are pressures, but there, is, there are very few organizations that actually factor in a lactating mother or provide a room for her. I'm sure there's the same thing with transgender women or even uh, queer women. How, how do you address something in basic as the infrastructure? I think infrastructure, I would divide it in two kinds of infrastructure. One is, of course, the physical infrastructure right. of uh, providing a room for people or providing a restroom for, uh, for people. Uh, not just women, even for men. If you go to many uh, international, I remember when I was in France uh, at the airport, uh, I was I was at the airport at uh, uh, in in Paris and uh, and I and I actually saw that uh, in the in the men's restroom there was a diaper changing uh, this thing I said why do you assume that the diaper is going to be changed Changed only by, by the, the woman yes. why can't why can't it be a man who's changing the diaper of the child right so I think it it is deeply rooted in our assumptions not just about women but also about men why do you think that men can't be kind and men can't be changing diapers uh, and I think what what's more needed if, uh, more than the physical infrastructure is the mental infrastructure in ensuring that people are trained to digest uh, uh, differences uh, to understand that everyone is not the same and that everyone could think differently could behave differently could talk differently and and we all are distinct beings so I think mental infrastructure becomes very important so how do you start educating the workforce on that? What are the first couple of steps that need to be taken at a base level? I think first is, uh, Anisha, to acknowledge that uh, uh, bias is universal. There's yes. absolutely no one in the world who doesn't have a bias. And uh, in Access, we have something called as the pause for bias sessions, uh, okay. where, we, where we pause and we reflect and we don't act on our reflexes. You know, we reflect. And I think it's important to, uh, to look at our biases on a timely basis. We keep up, uh, upgrading the curriculum every month. Okay. Um, we, um, we tend to speak to people. We don't speak at people. We don't have these numbers that we need to finish and uh, get more and more people enrolled in, but also ensuring that, that it actually reaches the last mile. Um, so I think, I think it's important to, uh, to have these sensitization lectures but also make it intentional uh, to have I think the biggest sensitization um, that uh, that any organization can have are uh, uh, is the human capital that they have mm -hmm. so when you have real people coming out and speaking about their experiences whether it's about mothers coming and speaking about their experiences trans men speaking about their experiences uh, experiences, uh, LGBT, gay people coming and speaking about their experiences. People learn from people, people don't learn from policies. So when we, even when we conduct these sessions, we use a lot of our personal anecdotes and our personal life stories. Uh, we bring our whole selves yeah. 
to these examples that we that we narrate and that's how it makes it possible you know because we are we are in a nation where where we all have got scolded i'm sure that you also got scolded because your neighbor scored 20 marks that's more than what you course. did so yeah so right <laughs> so we are all in this padoska pintu syndrome where we all want to score padoski pintu ya padoski shila syndrome where we all want to score better than what our neighbors did so we all learn from examples of other people and i think that uh, the biggest examples that we can offer is human capital by itself so get human beings to speak about their examples their own life journeys and through that we will we will be able to see more change but even uh, talking about personal anecdotes and bringing your full self in how do you express yourself at work in a workspace so i'm gender fluid yes. and uh, i go with the pronouns he or she and uh, which is something that i you could discover your gender at any point of your life it is very recent in fact it took a, a 18 year old someone uh, called ria i was chatting with her and that's when i uh, that's when i discovered that you know what i also feel this way and uh, I always probably knew that I was gender fluid but you require the eureka moment and I didn't have a word for it for it right and uh, language is an evolving phenomena like culture and uh, and I found a word for it and I said eureka I think I fit in there and um, and otherwise I've lived practically all my life as a gay man and uh, I like men um, you know uh, and and I've been candid about it so um, so I think language uh becomes so important uh in your policies in your practices um i think and language is evolving so how do you keep upgrading your policies with language like for instance previously we used to have the word maternity leave now now we yeah. use the word birthing parents because um uh, because there are uh, there are uh, there are men trans men who can who uh, pre operative trans men who can have children too so 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 things like this it's an evolving phenomena and i think we need to keep evolving yeah for sure and it, as it changes i think the definitions changes you get more ideas and concepts the more we evolve the more we open up this scenario it definitely makes a big change we had a recent study done um where tata scored with they had 52 companies ranked in terms of equality in the workspace tata still ranked among things so they have policies in place as well what do you think of their policies and is this the way in the right direction it's definitely a step there but how much more do we have to bridge i think i think it's important for all organizations to stand up and stand the test of time tata has always tata steel has done yes uh, 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 i know of i know of a few people i know of anubhuti from tata steel who is a trans person and who's very open and very candid about it i think i think it's important to have a rounded view when it comes to policies and practices and uh, you don't focus on focus on the niches but focus on the absolutes also focus on women focus on lgbtq people and don't wait for the sun to rise for you to start start your work i mean uh, we would have we would have had our decriminalization uh 20 years later if we believe that everyone needs to be educated for that yeah. the good time the good time to start being inclusive and to start changing your policies is yesterday you know so that's what i always believe and there's no you don't have to wait for the fourth day after after purnima or amavasya <laughs> to start it <laughs> no for sure but when we were talking about earlier when you said women yes is great but we also need to focus on more minor or more not not, not minor but more dedicated segments of queer women you said it was easier to do achieve 100% in that can you tell me more about that um like for instance uh, considering the prejudice uh, i think it's it's far more difficult for um, a lot of queer people i mean you see exceptions um in workforces where you see some people coming out and speaking about it but the truth is that we are not just the people who are visible to you there are a lot of invisible people who happen to be from the lgbt community um at least from the visible lot it's so easy to actually say that you know every organization might have 10 people 50 people or 100 people who are out and about about their sexuality it's so easy to actually focus on those niches and ensure that they have a wonderful experience and they become the ambassadors so it looks like a huge task when you look at uh 25% of women or 30% of women in the organization this this tends to be a smaller number per se 
but um, but that doesn't mean that you should not be focusing on the uh, on the well. others as well. I mean, you need to focus on all aspects together. But this becomes more visible. Focus on the niches, but also focus on on the larger numbers. And the larger numbers drive the niches. It's vice versa. Once you get the anecdotes and the Praise mm -hmm. for that. You want to do more as well. I, I think I think we need to come to a phase, uh, come to come to a time when we don't look at people as diversity, okay. uh, but uh, like like for instance, uh, we don't look at women as diversity, but we look at uh, diversity in women. I think we need to come to that phase because women are not a monolith. Uh, women are not just not just not just one, one. type of woman. I mean, you could be. Uh, uh, you could be a trans woman, you could be a lesbian woman, you could be a gender non-conforming woman, you could be, um, you could be a non-binary woman. Yeah. So there's so many kinds of women, same with men, same with uh, people, uh, people from the uh, and, um, LGBTQ, gender non-binary woman, nahi hota, gender non-binary. Binary <laughs> but yeah, but uh, I, think, I think it's important to focus on all on all aspects and now we need to start looking at diversity in women or rather than uh, people as diversity but then diversity in men as well why do yeah. because men are not a monolith trans men are men you know so um, and their lived experiences are, um, are are not the same as cis men and um, and uh, and it's important to acknowledge that unless and until we acknowledge that and uh, get those people to speak about their own life experiences and uh, uh, stand because they know their lives better of course. than what anyone else would. So, yeah. Well, let, well, let's go back to the women aspect. We have women in, I'm talking about the monolith women now. We have women in all spheres of the workforce, but largely when it comes from middle management to top management, there is a lack of support. There may be policies, but the implementation or lack of support comes in there. What can be done to bridge that gap as well? Um, and what do you feel from your on-ground experience? I think I think one is one is be incredibly intentional about the fact. Uh, look at the look at the facts and and acknowledge the fact that there are uh, lesser number of women. And in fact, when when you climb the ranks, every time you climb one one ladder, you'll see lesser you number drop. of women. You'll because see I think women that's dropping. the same time that also have a lot of life changes, they're, they're growing their family, whatever it is, I, they have I diverse think, opinions I, as well. I, I, I tend to, uh, I mean, I, I, can't, I can't speak for a woman, but I can definitely, uh, with my experience of what I have spoken to women, yes. I think that it's also important to understand that uh, women are beyond their life state changes. You know, uh, you, you could have... Uh, women who get pregnant and they take a maternity, people who get pregnant and they take maternity, maternity leaves, but uh, uh, they might have the responsibility of looking after the child. Uh, but many a times it's the assumption that people make that women have no ambition, you know. Especially after getting married. After and getting children, married, yes. her ambition is to ensure that you, you have, and I find it very insulting to men. Because it looks like men don't care at all and men shouldn't be caring at all, yeah. you know. So, it is, uh, so, so that becomes very challenging because I find it in, uh, uh, I mean, if, if men are saying those things, men should get offended every time they say something But it's usually like men who are asking these questions to so women that is when what, they that come is the for whole, an interview. That is like, the whole oh, thing. Oh, you, you have got married, what is the five-year plan? <laughs> why, don't any, why don't men get these questions? You're, you're married, how are you going to continue working? Yeah, because because you think they associate the biological process of bearing the child with the fact that uh, that's the responsibility of yes. only the woman. I mean, it's important that men also. In fact, men should fight for this, saying that hey, why why uh, why should uh, uh, I mean you know what I also need to take a break. I would love to have if I was a heterosexual man, I would have loved to. Um, take a break from my career and look after my child if at all I had a child you know and um, and because I, I love being a house husband you know so I would have loved being that of course. even now I'm looking for a guy <laughs> um, nothing has changed I mean I'm looking for a guy who can who can go out and work and I can stay at home and look after the dogs and cats why not if that's what gives you happiness why not <laughs> <laughs> yeah so I think it's important, Anisha, to understand that uh, 
women are not baby, baby making machines and uh, uh, women are not defined only by the life stage changes there is there is much more women have ambition and it's important to fuel their ambition to ensure that uh, that women don't start uh, uh, women stay in motion in access bank we have this uh, uh, we have a series in fact i was just taking a session we have a series called women in motion okay access women in motion where we basically go to different colleges and we just speak to women and men uh, because i think uh, men also need to know about it and we tell them that you know what it's okay to take a break but come back get counted as an economic entity because what what you do at your workspace also means what you're doing in and what, what is your position largely in society as well because you take your own purchase decisions you ensure that you are not at the mercy of somebody so so i think it's important to take that decision of course if a woman voluntarily wants to take wants to uh, wants to be a homemaker that's also something yeah. that we need to uh, acknowledge but it's important it's important to for women to stay in motion that's a brilliant idea which i think more workplaces need to implement something like that that it it has an impact on the also women who go back to work post maternity they have a huge impact on how their children are raised and see seeing a working mother as well it it drives it teaches the future generation as well yeah and yeah. so so does so 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 does when they see a father doing the of dishes course. i mean i think Both parents ways. should it's another thing sorry mom i mean if you're watching <laughs> this i don't do my dishes it's easy to preach <laughs> but uh uh but yeah i should start doing that very soon very soon mm. yes but let's go back to section 377 it's been a couple of years what has changed and what still needs to be done it's been 3 years now and i think that uh things have changed um a lot um but there's still a lot that needs to be done we have just big it's it's a metamorphosis you know it's the beginning as barkha that beautifully put it once um, when when she was with ndtv it's the beginning of the end of prejudice against lgbt people in india That's so it's the beginning of the end. end it's not the end you know so uh, i think uh, i think it's important to acknowledge that and also it's important to acknowledge that when love comes out of the closet hate comes out of the closet too as well so it's not that in countries like america and canada where you can get married and germany where you can get married there's no homophobia there is homophobia there is queer phobia even in those places just that um, you need to be uh, you need to be aware and organizations especially need to open their uh, minds and their hearts and their policies and their practices for the lgbtq community make a start make a start somewhere i know that you will fail sometimes you will falter sometimes you will also receive a lot of criticism but make that start make the august beginning uh, at any point uh, that you think i mean make that august beginning we we'll learn by the way so where do they start what is step 1 the first point would be to change change your policies and practices um uh, internally employees be more welcoming to lgbtq people uh, put it out there in black and white don't let people assume uh, say that intentionally that women lgbtq people uh, pwd persons everyone is welcome to join the bank join whichever workplace they represent uh, in fact uh, in fact we should eventually even go further and go to even more marginalized sections and ensure that more and more people join in but make a beginning make a beginning right now uh, ensure that you have once people come in the onus of inclusion lies on those who are included not on those who are excluded so ensure that 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 as a member of the majoritarian groups you ensure that anyone who happens to be lesser who, whose representation needs to be or is lesser in number uh they they feel comfortable expressing themselves because everyone thrives when the most marginalized uh, people in the in the group the most ostracized people in the group find a voice everyone finds a voice and the business will also thrive we will be a case in study very soon in the next 2 or 3 years you will see us booming just because we have a diversity equity and inclusion in place I like the fact that you said that the honest of inclusion lies with those who are included. So the first step is education then. First step is awareness and education. education. 
um, then is is infrastructure mental and, and physical. physical and uh, and once 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 you do that then take then go to market go and get your customers also acquainted understand because what what inclusion you're doing over here hmm. your business also needs to reflect the same you can't be close minded and and not have exclusively things mentioned for your customers when you are doing it for your internal customers who are your employees so with a bank like access bank how much of the percentage of business or loans are diverted towards making sure that everyone is included when it comes to in business loans for women or transgender women or even lgbt community how much of that is actually in place and in, in even in terms of suppliers and vendors if you need change it needs to come at all levels so one of the one of the things that we have put in place is we have a human rights policy which is very clear that um, um, on on our supplier front and mm -hmm. on our um, uh, on the front on on those fronts it's pretty clear that we will uh, um that that they need to uh, you know there are there are some rules that they need to adhere to okay. and we will uh, not bear any kind of discrimination in those parameters uh when it comes to um uh, when it comes to our we recently launched a come as you are policy uh, of policy and practices so internally for our customers uh, internally for our employees we have uh, all sets of rules languages language has been changed upgraded uh externally savings account we have just made the beginning uh we have uh, opened uh, savings we have been intentional in telling people that you can come if there's a same sex couple you can come and open a bank account with us okay uh, you can open a savings account you can come with your partner and open an account no questions asked um so uh, also you can list your partner as a nominee uh in your savings account or your term deposits uh you can add mx as a title if you happen to be a person who's uh, gender non binary gender fluid or if you're a trans person who wants to use that title so we have made provision for this we have made the beginning and uh, with time we will we will get more get more products i i will not be able to give you a percentage no, because that also means changes, uh, yeah. uh letting out uh, at the moment we have just begun the journey on the 6th of september so it's too early to give you numbers of that kind but we'll always be a small number we should not be gauging with percentage because the number of lgbt people who are out is is not that huge a number though the we are a huge number but that's not a huge number of people who are out and about about it so it's not about the numbers but it's about the intent it's about the policy uh, like it's this. about the intent and the intentionality that we put over there Yeah, it starts with the policies. It, it starts, starts with the policies. It starts with the practices. It starts with behavior. You know, change the behavior of the way you operate, the way you think, and keep challenging yourself. And come as you are will not be valid uh, two years down the line if you don't innovate. If you don't keep pace with uh, what's happening in the world. But tell me more about this. Come as you are. So come as you are. Um, so as I said, there are the three things that you can do: uh, open. joint accounts and um so we had some very good experiences uh, we've had people um, opening uh, opening accounts going personally and opening accounts and uh, i had a, a friend of mine uh, ajay who who went and opened an account and he and he put it very uh, happily that uh, you know that uh, i've opened this account and finally uh, i could walk yeah. inside a inside a bank and actually say that you know it's my partner and it's not a missus but it's a mister and uh, and Proud these are small moment. things yeah. these it, it is these small joys that you can bring to people people's lives and it was and and it makes perfect business sense also i don't think of it course. needs to be divorced from business uh, social good doesn't need to be divorced from business in fact it should be a, a business strategy they should be aligned always yeah. yeah but are there any such ex experiences that you have encountered which has given you moments of joy that these, there has been progressive change being made i think one of the one of the very important things that i have uh, that i've experienced is uh, you know we all go straight jacketed uh, because banking uh, is considered Since. to be a boring kind of a thing where you wear blacks and maroons and walk in navy blues navy blues navy yeah. blues so i i went but but i did i did make a little bit of change over there i went wearing a pink a, a pink suit, suit. and uh, this is first my, day at work 
Sorry? This is your first day at work. It was my, it was my first week at week. work. Okay. So I went and uh, the head of HR, uh, Raj Kamal, who's my boss's boss, so she called me to the room and she was livid, okay? And uh, she looked at me, why are you dressed like this? Why are you behaving? Why are you dressed like this? And I was like, why is she so animated? And I thought, did I spill anything in my coat? And I thought I looked quite sexy in, in a pink. I couldn't be more gay than wearing something pink. Uh, you know, some stereotypes are true. I really love pink. <laughs> so, uh, I think normal is also normal is also stereotype. So, I it's subscribe to that stereotype as well. Uh, so, I, I went and she, she was livid and I asked her why, uh, why you're like this. And then she looked at me and she said, Harish, we didn't hire you to fit in. You're different and we acknowledge that you're different. Stand out. And that coming from a banking sector and, is and she was the head HR right. and of course I couldn't I, I I could stand out but it was not it is not true for uh, everyone else uh, in the bank so we changed the dress code policy we upgraded it where everyone could dress the way they want and then of course I, I did come out and speak about it. But Raish, do you think this was made because you were at a level of making an impact and making a change? Whereas it would be somebody who was probably just starting at a much junior level. Would it have had the same impact? Again, it I think, Anisha, it's important to have queer people in decisive positions, but also important to have all people in all positions. Yes. Queer people don't exist uh, in the forefronts or the margins. They exist everywhere. And uh, But yes, it did, it did it help had, doing that. Right. But um, I joined Access Bank because we had same-sex partner benefits. I could add my boyfriend's name, non-existent boyfriend's name uh, in the list of future uh, planning. Yeah, future planning. I could I could just add him to the list uh, for MediClaim benefits. I joined. So there were some people, it was a bank which already thought of something like that. Even the come as you are policy, I give it a name and a structure maybe because I'm from the community. You don't need to have those people to actually enact those things. Of course, you need to decide go to market, discuss with, with the of target course. audience. Otherwise but that's for every policy. That's for every so policy. Let's not, but yeah, you let's don't not need to wait for, yeah. a, for a group, for a Harish to come to start something. Even if I was not there, they would have come up with something. I'm sure about it. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I'm sure if they already had such progressive thoughts and they had policies. Intentional. Intention, like you're saying, is the greatest factor. Yeah. yeah. But that's amazing. Um, do you have anything else that we can discuss before we take questions from the audience? If we anyone could. has questions, please start tagging them in. We'll take questions in about five minutes, five to ten minutes. Do we have questions? Okay. Um, as you mentioned, there can also be many kinds of personalities and our generations aren't trained to see them so fluidly. Awareness is happening, but we have miles to go. What are some of the ways we can train ourselves uh, to be inclusive uh, in the way we react, react act, and act and react? React, act, react, and, interact. act and interact. Oh my God, that was a tongue twister. <laughs> so, uh, you, you'd like to answer that? Okay. Go ahead. So, I think, um, I think we'll never be ready. Okay. So, if we are waiting for the right time to be ready, we'll never be ready and we, we'll always have miles to go. Because society is a changing phenomena, so we always have miles to go. Uh, it's important to make the beginning, make the August beginning, even if you're beginning in March. I think what you said, <laughs> said is the intention has to be there first. Yeah. Let's start with getting the intention in place and then everything else will just follow. Yeah, yeah. We know education and learning starts from home, but what if home itself is a place you need to fight for being fair and, ac and accept people as they are? What do you think there are? What do you think are the ways we can help the next generation? Um, I think, you know, um, uh, I, I, my mother used to tell this, use this word which was almost like a shlok for me. She used to say, uh, home is a place to which a, bat a bruised and battered individual returns after doing battle with the world. So your battles sometimes, and when home becomes a battlefield, it is, it is challenging. Uh, but we need to constantly acknowledge that uh, that our battles are not just at our workplaces, our battles are at home and our battles are everywhere. Um, one thing is to become, is to be financially and emotionally independent, uh, seek therapy on a regular basis. My therapist's name is Aarti, I have dysthymia and it's important to acknowledge these things and to remove the 
remove the shame out of therapy uh, and uh, and we all are fighting a battle i mean it's not it's it's not that uh, 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 you know uh, people from a certain class or a certain caste or a certain religion are not fighting the battle we all are fighting the battle and it's important to recognize and to seek therapy whenever we can and to seek help uh, whenever we can and the ways that we can help the next generation is to be more aware don't pass on your bigotry to the next generation if you are not aware if if you if you learnt that bring up your children i mean first thing when when you have children first of all adopt cats or dogs they need homes adopt okay uh, and if you have children again adopt but uh, uh, if you have children then then ensure that uh, uh, that those children are brought up children decide what their gender is and what their sexuality is you don't you don't uh, you don't thrust a gender or a sexuality on them just because you are so <laughs> but i think also there is a change that at, at least i've noticed in the older generation as well they they're inquiring there is an intention to understand they will question you okay so what does this definition mean have you come across stuff like that as well well yes i mean there are many people like my neighbors are always inquisitive i remember my neighbor asking my mother oh your son is good and son is this thing i said why don't you get him married and my mother said yeah we are just looking for a boy to get him married so yes yeah, so sometimes it it does happen and they did understand over a period of time that um, that what sexuality is and it's not interchangeable um it's not something that i can wake up and change people do understand but it requires a great deal of patience and uh, and always remember the onus of inclusion lies on those who are included it. not on those who are excluded so yeah so people who are excluded you don't need to work hard to get included the ones who are included Means. need to work hard to include more diverse people because it helps them too of course mm -hmm. take the next one um uh half of lgbtq women hear sexist comments or joke about their gender while at work how to avoid this um i think um, i think first uh when you when you hush an issue you rush in homophobia so don't hush these issues uh if there's a challenge uh, address the address the issue then and there speak about be intentional in speaking about people don't i don't even know if people understand the difference between sex and gender uh people i don't know if people understand the difference between sex sexuality and gender as well so i think it's important education 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 is the most important thing and it's important to uh, look at education in a more rounded way and it doesn't you know i find it much easier anisha to speak to school children than to speak open. to speak in workplaces because school children come from the, uh, come from a more unbiased kind of an approach but uh, 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 when it comes to uh very is like you're talking maybe this should be a part of your school curriculum when you introduce sex education to the children you should also have a talk about this they need to be aware yeah i mean sex sexuality Everything rounded else. education because you know? that's the time where they're most confused yeah yeah I I don't I I don't know I mean even even people who are going to watch this on YouTube and uh, I I don't I don't know if they and it's important that if you are watching this right now please google up what is sex what is gender what is sexuality educate yourself because the the next generation is going to be ruthless they are not going to uh, deal with your ignorance the way the previous generation yes. did <laughs> and they shouldn't and have they shouldn't to talk they shouldn't have to they shouldn't have to at all Okay so um isn't religion playing an important role in shielding people from becoming more accept inclusive of lgbtq um i think i think the basis of every religion should be root, should be rooted on acceptance and uh, empathy and uh, and and science right and uh, if if somebody believes otherwise then i would believe that that religion is not a religion and and i and i mean and i mean this across religions i am not picking up one religion uh, whether uh, i'm not going to take the names of religions and it will become this thing i'm referring to major religions who are majority religions and minority religions across religions uh, religion cannot propagate bigotry religion cannot propagate inequality the purpose of religion should be to stand up for everybody 
irrespective of what numbers are to stand up for science and science says that lgbtq people are valid their lives their lives are valid lgbtq people exist in all strata of society they exist everywhere so it's just time that religion catches up um in addition to the inclusion of lgbtq community india has evils of caste to deal with harish what great examples have you seen in your corporate exposure where companies have been successful in dealing with phobias that result from these biases i need to i need to first acknowledge uh, anisha that i myself was was biased and i didn't realize to be caste blind is is not a matter of pride i was brought up i'm i belong to a uh i i come from a family which practices brahmanism okay and um, and i had cultures uh but i i was caste blind i didn't know i didn't see discrimin i didn't feel discrimination so i thought that there's no discrimination you know but uh, i put up an ad uh, a matrimonial ad on um, uh, uh and and i thought it was okay to joke and to say something like uh, caste no bar but i your preferred and i thought that hey it was just a funny take i was just being typical of all other advertisements i don't really it doesn't really matter, matter to, to me, me. um uh, it it really didn't matter to me at that time but when people started reacting it took me some time to digest to reflect and to understand that it's not okay it's not my lived experience it's not okay for me to joke about these things to say these things because for some people they've been ostracized and excluded for for ages yes. together so i think um, when it comes to the corporate space also people have just started i mean i mean i know of uh, i read some articles in america where people were discriminated on the basis of their caste and it yeah. made huge uh, headlines but i think corporates should also start focusing on that have we started doing that uh, whether it's uh, dalit bahujan uh, adivasi people or whether it's people from other uh, backgrounds that we have started focusing on whether we are focus for, uh, focusing on religion uh not not at the moment because it's uh um uh, it's something that w- that we all start need to start doing um if you'd ask me if if uh, the needle has moved already on that i don't think in the indian diaspora the needle has moved oh. but it needs to it needs to look at look at that aspect yeah that's an important one how do you feel every time you were let down or saw bias in front of you how did you overcome such incidents and what gave you the strength i think if your own personal journey cannot inspire you nothing else will i think my inspiration doesn't lie in mother teresa or somebody else Ma, or it should be mother it should be ellen de generous for me yeah. but uh uh my inspiration lies in my mirror i uh, look at my life on what i have fought and i'm you know to live your life truly and unabashedly is the truest form of activism and uh and and i practice self activism every day i sit stand in front of the mirror and i feel proud not to a point of pride that engulfs me but pride that actually uh, actually dissolves me and makes me more more believable and more real and uh, and that makes it easier for me and the strength comes from that as well okay yeah. as you are implementing my policies you must have encountered employees who found it difficult to accept the lgbt community community how did you deal with getting them to accept and make the change um very few though i mean i i would not say because what exists in the outside world exists within access and within no. uh, the world so we are not divorced from the society that we live in um i would not say that i have not encountered people who don't understand what lgbtq people are but um but but um I I speak to them. I speak to them when they you know you might be you might be biased to whatever level but when you have somebody in flesh and blood coming and telling you about it when you encounter because you have this notion about an LGBTQ person or you have a notion about a banker you have a notion about so many things it's, it's important to break that yeah. and when you when you see a person in flesh and blood sitting and chatting with you then then you don't give heed to all those all those biases that exist but do they come up do you face a bit of resistance when policies are implemented i didn't i didn't in this organization in fact uh, i should tell you we had a board meeting uh, the number of times in my 
board meeting and in my discussions have spoken about penis and vagina and what is transgender and LGBTQ and uh, from a scientific basis, not from pornographic basis, is uh, this thing. And, and people are generally, at least in my organization, people are very open-minded uh, from top to bottom. I think uh, uh, right from the management committee mm. where the CEO and other people sit, uh, I've had conversations with them. In fact, even when we had to come out with the come as you are policy, we placed it amongst them and they all unanimously decided that the that it's that's that it's an idea that time has come and we will learn we will learn with time but we are not going to waste another moment delaying uh, providing services to people or being intentional about it uh, just because some th there could be some belief somewhere that uh, that the time that that tomorrow is a better day yes. today is not the day today is the mm -hmm. day Thank you so much, Harish. That was our last question. Thank you so much for joining us this evening and thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you. Thank you so much, It's an much, absolute Anish. pleasure. Thank you.